you know, feelings come out of nowhere and achieve some yeah. love. And then, you know, love, where love is, is fucking hate later when the jealousy. Oh, of course. Then... Ooh, we from the east to the west, that smoke. So you and Angie were close before you and Joe were close then, right? Like you was the one that brought that relationship together. Yeah, my whole, my whole, but my whole vision of that is Angie, you know, I was like supposed to be the, the whatever, um, the handsome guy and the playboy, you know, whatever. That's how they marketed me, which I was married already. You know what I'm saying? And Angie knew that. Like she came to my house. She she, she met my son, my wife. We played fucking, uh, you know, uh, dominoes together, Monopoly, you know, mm-hmm. ball games. You know how they used to do back then. Oh, damn. And, you know, with the family. Close, huh? I went to her house, I spent the night, you know what I'm saying? Wow. On some cool shit, never had no sex or nothing. But I think she wanted more than that for me. I wasn't trying to do that because I was, that's not, she already made my, my wife and get the fuck out of here. We're not doing that. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, yeah. Unless you just force yourself and start blowing me and I can't stop you and then I'll let you go. <laughs> but, but, but you <laughs> know what I'm saying? It was, I, yeah, and it wasn't, I, I wasn't feeling her like that. I just had respect like that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? When it comes to that, you know, I ain't gonna put my wife through that because that's a high level. I could go to the projects and fuck, you know what I'm saying? Keisha on the roof because Keisha's just, Keisha, she's not going to be, she's not out there. She's yeah. going to do fucking interviews and be like this. Yeah, fuck Q&A. You know, and and yeah. embarrass my whole family. You know what I'm saying? But Angie, it could get serious where she's in the limelight and then, you know, feelings come out of nowhere and then she's in yeah. love. And then, you know, love, where love is, is fucking hate later when the jealousy. Oh, of and course. Then, and then, you know, the whole spot is blown and I'm a fucking piece of shit. I look crazy in my family. So no, I didn't want to do that. I really thought too much of that, and I, I was Damn, married. You held it down. You held it down because Angie, bro, Angie. Yeah, sexy, back then she bro. was. Right now she looked like a second beluga. Right now she looked <laughs> beluga, the, the sister for real. So, but but it's back then she was a cutie, and she always she's still a cutie, but you know, and in her own way. But I'm just saying I wasn't interested in that. I I, I consider her more of a friendship. I and I confided her in a lot of things, not because she was Angie the the disc jockey at ninety seven, and she had power. Just because we was cool like that. She knows that. So yep. it was her fucking party that I went to and represented. I did Jimmy's live, live on Jimmy's that day yep. on the stage for her. I didn't get paid or nothing. I, I, you know, I wrote that Jimmy's fucking song for her and for her album. You know what I'm saying? I was there to be helpful as a friend. We chilled on some regular bowling shit, cool house shit, regular love. So then when the situation happened, okay, you know, she knew exactly what happened. She knew that Joe is the one who swung on me. He, he swung on the other person first. I was mm-hmm. trying to stop the fight. He swung on me. He's in your party, disrespected your party, your album release. If, I mean, if it's, you know, that's my album release. He's the nigga who initiated your fuck up. You know, cut your friend off. He cut your friend or he got your friend cut at your own album release. And this was like you disrespected because he started trouble in your shit, fucked up the party. So, how the fuck are you gonna go over there with him? What kind of fucking politics can he say to you? Are you scared of him? I don't think you scared of him, your girl. You don't have nothing to worry about. Did you fucking get wet when he did that and that's your turned you on? What happened? How can you you know, and I tell you at the end of the day, I come back and she comes see me in my house with the scars already, and I told her exactly what happened. Oh, As a real nigga. As a real nigga, never like no, 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 yo, you know, nothing. I was like, yeah, nigga and she set me knew up. you like that, and she knows she your knew character. me like that. All she right. knew me like that. So but what she happened? She also knows you're a hothead, though. That you like to swing. She first. knows I'm a hothead, but she also knows that it doesn't matter if you're a hothead. I'm your friend, right? I didn't start nothing. I'm. No, if you know the know. facts, the fact is that I tried to stop a fight. How the fuck is that a hothead? No, no, I'm no. What I'm trying fight. to say is, you know how reputations. Yeah, are, you we, know what I'm saying. You know I'm a hothead, but not. But yeah, not in that part. I would never disrespect you, a fuck up your party. That's what I, I was going to say. Your party. So it's it's something like you know, if it wasn't a party, I understood, but it was her party. At Jimmy's, mm-hmm. it was her lit. It was her album release that I came to represent for. That Joe supposedly I came to represent for. And then you try to tell me that I wouldn't get mad at the fact that Joe fucked up my party when he, if that's true. But that could have that could have took that outside and respected me. You understand? Yeah. So so at the end of the day, you did it at her party. You fucked up a party. No matter. Later on, a week later, she has him on High ninety seven and he's telling the story to his way. Oh, so she, she does. Did, she never. She, didn't... she never gave me the shot to do that. And I'm her friend. She never gives me the shot. And y'all was like to this. get on. Exactly. She was just at your house. Exactly. Wow. She, exactly. And she never got fucking interview about this. Never. Why? They're directing the traffic. 
It's, wow. it's, it's deliberately. Bro, it's deliberately. It's, she's the main key. Me. She's a main key. Like you could go, you know. I want, I want to see the date. Somebody ask her. Maybe Panda, fucking chop, chop her down and go. Maybe if he catches one day, she could ask him, do an interview with her and ask him, how do you feel, knowing that, that happened at your party? All the facts, that happened at your party. Cuban went to represent you. Uh, he performed for you. You was a friend before. Joe was even closer with Cuban. I mean, with with, with you, and you gave. Joe, an opportunity to say his story on your show on Hot 97 and then never, ever give Cuba the opportunity to say his side. But yet you could brag about Pac and Biggie by you letting Pac's part out and, and representing the side of both artists. Like you are this mediator when you didn't do that with Cuban. What was the difference between Cuban and Pac? Cuban and Biggie. That's the artist. And I was closer to her than, than, than Pac and Biggie was ever. Yeah. But you don't give that nigga a check. So do you understand how I feel? I see what you're saying. And that was the it, first one. That was the first one that helped. She helped him become, you know what I'm saying, a little more powerful in blackballing. Because gotcha. she already, he did So that. the blackball was already in the works. And then with her, in, in course, the works. With her it was comes, already in the works. With her comes Sean Pekka. With her comes Sean Pekka. With her comes uh, DJ Nuff, Camilo, all of them. There was a, a, a conglomerate together. That's a whole 97 staff. That's yep. DJ K Slate, all of them. So now I'm blackballed and the whole shit without nobody knowing. Now you're done. Back then. Yeah. Instead, but they kept it quiet. They act like it don't got me from me. Oh, sir, my nigga. We know. I know what's going on, nigga. I know. Yeah. And she's a big you know? voice. She's a big voice. Of course. Like, she's powerful. Her father. She's her father was a powerful. dick jockey, nigga. She had bloodline. The bloodline goes yeah. deep. Yeah. So she's big. She's big. So Damn. that's what I'm saying. These are the people that I had against me. And they usually was my people that was with me. Supposed to be helping my, me as friends. Well, you know, we're supposed to help each other. <laughs> So this is crazy, that's crazy, bro. Nah, that that's crazy. Like yeah. for somebody, well, to be that's, so that's why I'm actually crazy now. That's why you see me like you know niggas calling me crackhead and all this because I'll be fucking this fast and this, and I'll be like this. All right, if I gotta serious? be, at the, it got niggas. You know, I know I'll be breaking night wherever, and I do fucking shits and interviews, and I come out with my fucking cube robe on. You know, they think I'm going crazy. Nah, <laughs> like, I, yeah. With that's, but I want to give that out. 